Oscar Romero while he delivered mass in San Salvador. I mention it because he was killed with guns supported by the U.S. government. And it's part of a culture of violence. A culture of violence that continues. Shootings in our schools are what capture headlines. The horror of the tragedy of young innocents being shot down. But it's a manifestation of a gun culture, a culture of violence that needs to stop, not just on school sites, but in urban communities, in rural communities. Gun violence is part of our culture. It was started by people. We're going to end it with people of conscience and people who put morality ahead of profits. Do you know that more people in the U.S. have died from gun violence since 1968 than every U.S. soldier killed in every war, including the Civil War? More have died from gun violence. We say no more, 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 no more. Thank you. Let me just close by saying, you know, many say this shouldn't be about politics. It shouldn't be partisan. But friends, we live in a very political society, a political culture, and a political culture that the NRA has been able to dominate to the detriment of the health and safety of our communities. And the solutions, the solutions are going to be marching in the streets, raising a moral voice, and taking political action. It's important to distinguish between elected representatives who have fought and voted for gun control and those who have sold their souls to the NRA. As I came over here, I listened to articulate, passionate young people, many from Florida, some from Chicago, from around the nation, speaking in Washington, D.C. We are among 800 demonstrations on the planet today. The demands raised by the Florida students are background checks. We have those in California. A ban on assault weapons. We have those in California. multi-ammunition clips. We have those in California. And the list goes on. The reason we have that in California is because we have majorities who have voted for it in the face of NRA opposition.
There is no single law, there's no group of laws that will end the violence. But combined, if we change law, we change minds, we change culture, and we embrace a culture of love, unity, and support, even for those in our communities who may be struggling. We need to join hands. We need to embrace the alienated student whose resort now is to pick up a gun. We need to spot that student, embrace that student with love, and provide the services. Yeah! And to close, we don't need to arm our teachers with guns. We need, we need to arm our teachers with pencils and pens and school supplies. Yeah! to arm all of our teachers and our communities with a moral compass, a moral compass that says, down with guns, up with the human spirit, protect life, advance life, recognizing how powerful it was to hear from some of the students that are up here behind me. I mean, what better way to start this, right? So, there are over 700 of these events going on around the world right now, in six continents, so we're not standing alone. Yeah. And this is how change happens. Standing here with our friends, our families, and our community. Students shouldn't have to be fighting for their lives. They should, they should be focusing on school. And getting prepared to be productive adults. Mass shootings aren't new, but in recent years they've resulted in more deaths. Listening to the stories of the students from Parkland breaks my heart. This experience goes to teach us that we have to fight for our lives. And not by raising our arms, but by doing what we're doing here today, by raising our voices. I shot guns before when I was in Boy Scouts, and when I spent a short time in the Navy, I had to get my qualifications. That was on a gun range, away from pub to public. We're not asking for the repeal of guns from every single person, but at least we have to move the ball forward somehow. Let's take some steps forward. <laughs> And so how we can do that is by holding our representatives accountable, because we're their boss. So, <laughs> so I'm speaking to all of you that if you are not registered, you need to register before you leave here today. But I want to particularly speak to the youth that are here today. So if you do not know this, California changed its policy so that you can pre-register when you turn the age of 16. So, who here is under the age of 16? Let me see, show your hands. Not 
registered yet, have not pre-registered. Keep your hands up if you have not pre-registered yet. All of you need to pre-register before you leave here today. And let's say, everybody over the age, to, over the age of 18, raise your hand. Okay. Registered to vote, put your hand down. If your hand is still up, you need to be registered. Make the way for these kids to make the right example. I want to thank the youth for coming out here today and hosting this event and using their energy to really motivate us to come together as a community. I'll end with I love you all. Thank you. Now next, I'd like you to invite up to the front, one, Debbie Aguilar, <laughs> so you can. an activist Please and a founder of A Time for Grieving and Healing. That's fine, thank you. <laughs> well, while we're getting in touch with you. Right there, right there. Okay. Oh, here we go. Oh. Hey, hello. Hello. to push the solving problem. We, the students, and we, the people, must do it ourselves. Yeah! Woo! The school I go to, Marina High School, recently had a shooting threat. It was for March 14th, the day we were holding our walkout. That wasn't the first time we've had a threat. And in most cases, a lot of students end up staying home because they're worried about something happening. Will we no longer... We, me, we can no longer pursue our education because of fear and terrorism. We are not free. When the terrorists that live their lives to kill and destroy our country win, we lose. When 
students like me and my friends cannot receive the education that they need to lead a successful and productive life, we all lose. Yeah! What kind of country do we live in where students are afraid that they might be killed at school? The schoolyard isn't a battleground. This isn't some far off foreign besieged country with constant violence and shootings. This is our community. These are our schools. These are our kids. This isn't a distant problem. This is right in our face and we can't ignore this. Politicians, politicians are afraid of addressing gun control because of the NRA. The power that the NRA has doesn't come from only money, but also comes from the fear that politicians have that the NRA will work to get them voted out of office. What politicians should be afraid of is the children and communities affected by the shootings voting them out of office. Yes, the government can't put this off anymore. They cannot procrastinate on the future of our youth, especially when it comes to school. That's our job. <laughs> the Congress and the President, we are not just some statistics. We are your children. We are your family. Your thoughts and prayers are no longer enough. dying makes you as angry as it makes me or anyone else, then you'll do something to stop it. There's, there's no point in getting angry at something if you're not going to help fix it. We need better background checks. We need to raise the age limit to purchase guns. We don't need assault rifles, which are weapons of war plaguing our community. And we sure as hell don't need the NRA and the pockets of politicians quietly controlling gun laws. Our country isn't a battleground either. Our hearts and souls go out to the victims and their families. But I'm tired of praying. Let's use our thoughts to get something done. Yeah, the yeah, time yeah. for change is now, so let's get to it! Thank you, Jack, for that empowering speech. Now next, I'd like to introduce a man who goes by the name Stephen Goings. Though some of you may know him as Quasar. He's a board member for the Monterey chapter of the National Coalition Building Institute <laughs> and an advisor to the CSUMB NAACP. So everyone who's still here, the struggle is real, right? So I'm going to say, young people, you're going to say power, young people. part of the event. <laughs> I say black lives, you say matter. Black lives. Matter. Black lives. Matter. Matter. I say all lives matter when you say black lives matter. All lives matter when black lives matter. some completely outrageous claims. <laughs> the first claim... First is, can't see anything, right? My, my first outrageous claim is that the Parkland shooting is part of the legacy of slavery. Right. The second outrageous claim is that it is within the power of millennials to dismantle America's gun culture. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, uh, so, so why does, uh, so there's all these terrible statistics, right? So America uh, is 5% of the population. We own 50% of the guns. There are 10,000 homicides in America each year. There are 20, thousand suicides in guns in America each year. 60% of African American women who have been shot by police were unarmed. This very week, at the start of this week in Sacramento, a young black man, 22 years old, was shot in his grandmother's front yard, the backyard, thank you. The police thought he had a gun. He had a cell phone. <laughs> so why, here's the question, why does America have the largest prison center in the world? The most imprisoned people. 
And why does America have the greatest number of gun deaths in America? The answer is simple. What we have been told about the Second Amendment is a lie. It is very like the Declaration of Independence, which says that all men are created equal. Yay! Eleven years later, in the Constitution Article 1, African slaves were counted as three-fifths of a person. Which puts the lie to that lofty rhetoric about all men are created equal. Well, what we have been told about the Second Amendment is that the purpose of the Second Amendment is so that we will have a well-armed militia so that we can protect ourselves from a tyrannical government. That is not true. The reason why we have the Second Amendment was so that slave owners could protect themselves from slave revolts. That's the reason why we have a Second Amendment. And so what that really means, and that's the reason, so, and, and this is how bad it was. So why, it wasn't just a suggestion. White men in, this, in colonial America were mandated, were required to carry weapons so that they could catch runaway slaves and send them back. The police, the modern police force, is the descendant of, 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 of slavery. The prison system is the descendant of slavery. This is why we have the largest prison si uh, 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 system in the world, and the majority of them are, are black and Latino people. So this is a matter, this is what, this, so this is, this is what is before us, so I want to see just how big what these young people are taking on. They have the power to completely change all of this. Right? So it's up for all these young people to vote, to know your history, because here's the thing, all, there's so many white, white people are now being killed um, because of a system that was built for black people. White people are now in jail in this country more than they are any other place in the world because of a system that was built to incarcerate black people. So now it's coming home to roots. Now we finally understand that we've all got to be in the same struggle together. So young people, young people, it's your job to keep this history, to know it, to replace, to replace the NRA with your own movement. Power to the people. Stephen. I'd like to bring things back to another student activist. This one from Pacific Grove High. The Green Bunny. First of all, I'd like to say thank you to everyone who's still here in the rain. younger than the 
representatives. We high school students are a whole lot younger still. Yes, age is accompanied by experience. The youth offer the best take on an entirely unacceptable pattern. Students are being run down in places that are supposed to represent hope for our future. People are being run down in places that are supposed to be safe. Conspiracy theorists and gun lobby apologists have denounced Stoneman Douglas High School students as righteous actors. Oh. When in reality, oh. Oh. when in reality, they are rightist activists. Yeah. Survivors tear in anguish into action, exhibiting courage not only on that tragic day, but also especially in the days that follow. On March 14th, students across the nation followed their lead, lending their voices to call out elected representatives for refusing to see the writing on the wall. Meanwhile, the tractors distract. They overlook the arguments of student advocates by disparaging the numbers of times we've rounded the sun. Variations on themes of too young to understand politics have flooded the national dialogue. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Right now is the time to inspire. 